Good afternoon. Welcome everyone to the Georgia Tech Manufacturing Institute Lunch and Learn Seminar Series. My name is Paige Shi, and I'm the Strategic Partners Officer for GTMI. GTMI is one of 11 Georgia Tech interdisciplinary research institutes that uniquely focuses on manufacturing research, uh, development, and deployment. We help tackle the grand challenges of today's manufacturers and assist our partners in moving innovations from the lab to the marketplace. GTMI has a wide variety of facilities and equipment located on main campus for basic research and nearby on 14th Street for applied research in our advanced manufacturing pilot facility, also known as AMPF. GTMI's mission includes education and workforce training, engaging in collaborative partnerships with industry, academia, and government, as well as thought leadership. GTMI, GTMI hosts the Lunch and Learn series every semester. This spring, sessions will be held every Monday at noon as live online events. And these sessions are excellent opportunities for Georgia Tech faculty, undergraduate and graduate level students and researchers, as well as our growing global manufacturing community to learn and share advanced manufacturing knowledge. To ensure a smooth presentation experience today, audience members are automatically muted. If you have questions or comments for the speaker, we encourage you to use the Q&A panel on your screen to submit those questions as they come to mind, and we will address all the questions at the end of the lecture. Today, I'm very pleased to introduce uh, Dr. Doug Friedman. Dr. Friedman is CEO of Biomade, the Bioindustrial Manufacturing Innovation Institute, as well as Executive Director of the Engineering Biology Research Consortium, or EBRC. His primary scientific and technical interests lie in the fields of synthetic biology, biomanufacturing, and modern biotechnology. Doug's policy interests include development of sustainable biotechnology, safeguarding the bioeconomy, and accelerating technical advancement by building diverse, robust community partnerships. He regularly serves as a subject matter expert on emerging biotechnologies, biotechnology policy, and national security topics at the interface of the biological and chemical sciences. Doug participates in more than a dozen external scientific and policy committees and boards. Prior to his role as EBRC, Doug was a study director and senior program officer with the Board on Chemical Sciences and Technology at the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. His primary portfolio focused on the advancement of science and engineering at the interface of chemistry and biology, often as they related to national security. Early in his career, Doug performed research in physical organic chemistry and chemical biology in academia and industry. He earned a PhD in chemistry from Northwestern University and a BS in chemical biology from the University of California, Berkeley. Welcome, Dr. Friedman. You may now begin your presentation. Uh, so it's great to be with, with you all today. Um, and uh, I, I'm uh, pleased to, to talk to you about Biomade, the newest uh, Manufacturing USA or Manufacturing Innovation Institute focused on the development of, of bioindustrial products. Um, a few sort of high-level comments uh, before I get into my presentation. Um, so the, the first is that Biomade is uh, brand new and Georgia Tech played an important role in uh, helping it come to, to fruition. So particularly um, Drs. Pamela Peraltiaia and Mark Staczynski um, from Georgia Tech were, were active members along with a broader of the Georgia Tech community uh, in part of our large proposal team to put this together. And so I'm really grateful uh, for that and looking forward to getting the Institute launched uh, and, and starting to, to work with you all. Um, we are in our uh, post-announcement but pre-formal launch phase. And so the slides I have for you today are sort of a mix of, of comments about the industry, uh, as well as a bunch of fairly wordy slides with uh, some details about Biomade that are more intended uh, to be left with you uh, to look at look at afterwards. Uh, the other piece of that, of course, is that uh, in our pre-launch phase, um, I'm somewhat limited with uh, how much uh, detail I can share, um, but I look forward to walking through uh, where we're at today and where we plan to be in the future. Um, I know I burned a little bit of time with our uh, audio issue, uh, but I don't plan to take the full time that's allotted for the talk and uh, hope that we can have some time for Q&A uh, at the end so that I can focus on the topics that are 
of most interest to you. So uh, as I mentioned, Biomade is a Manufacturing USA Institute uh, that was announced in October of last year. Um, we're in our uh, sort of first six month startup phase. Uh, one of the things I've been, been uh, telling colleagues uh, across the country as we get this thing started is, there really is a whole lot they don't tell you about manufacturing innovation institutes until after you've been selected. Uh, and so all of that sort of download and development to get the thing running uh, as a, a, a truly independent member-driven institute is what we've been focused on so far. Uh, this is sort of the catch-all slide. It covers all of the primary details. So um, we're a, a, an institute with our primary headquarters uh, in St. Paul, Minnesota, on the University of Minnesota campus, um, but really are focused on building a national network of uh, bioindustrial manufacturing innovation, uh, everything from uh, reasonably early R&D with a manufacturing angle, you know, through to reasonably large scale, how do we commercialize an industry uh, that has seen a lot of early stage investment. And I'll get into a little bit of detail there in some upcoming slides. Um, Biomate has an initial uh, seven year investment uh, of $275 million, which includes uh, $87.5 million from the Department of, of Defense. Uh, and the remainder of that is uh, from uh, state and local governments, companies, universities, uh, and others across the country. You'll see on this map that we have a lot of the country covered. Uh, I have a uh, strong desire, if only to complement my uh, interest in completeness, to fill in all of these states uh, on, on the map before the end of, of the calendar year. I don't think that's unreasonable given both the excitement uh, and opportunity in industrial biomanufacturing, uh, and we can, can, can do that. Um, I'm going to take a couple of minutes to talk about how we see Biomade uh, fitting into the overall ecosystem and really what are what are our overall goals. Um, so the vision uh, at a high level is to build a sustainable domestic end to end bio industrial manufacturing ecosystem. It's a few words, but a lot packed in there. Um, sustainable has a lot of meanings in this context. So sustainable uh, both means um, sustainable as an institute, right? We want to exist for a long time uh, driven by industry and academic members, but we also want to develop uh, environmentally sustainable uh, bioindustrial products um, that are going to be important for the long-term future uh, of the U.S. society, environment, and the world. Um, a domestic ecosystem, uh, this is a major investment by the U.S. government, the U.S. Department of Defense, uh, focused on really enabling domestic biomanufacturing to cover a wide array of products. End-to-end uh, -to -end is a word that we've uh, taken actually from the funding announcement. Um, at, the, at the time, I was sort of wondering whether uh, that was something that would come through, but I've come to really like it because I think it really uh, articulates clearly the idea that we want to start with the earliest R&D we can and make sure that we've covered all of our bases along the way to get from uh, really an idea and basic research all the way through to commercialized products and profitable companies, which ultimately is going to be required for a robust manufacturing ecosystem. And so how are we going to do that? That's really covered in our mission statement. It's about uh, enabling manufacturing at all scales. Uh, I've come to use the phrase, uh, what is the relevant scale for what you're doing? Uh, if you're talking about a pharmaceutical product, which we don't focus on, um, the scale might be different than if you're talking about a fuel. Uh, and you really have everything in between. Uh, we want to develop technologies to en enhance competitiveness. Uh, we want to de-risk investment in relevant infrastructure. We want to expand the workforce to realize the economic promise of, of, industrial, of industrial biotechnology. And I'll touch on all of those topics uh, with you today. Uh, so uh, stealing from the Department of Defense uh, manufacturing readiness level terminology, Biomade, as with all MIIs, is focused on MRLs 
four to seven. Um, and uh, the timing of that for industrial biotechnology really couldn't be better. We've seen over the last 20 years an incredible both federal and uh, private sector investment in early R&D uh, to develop uh, bio solutions to, to problems, but they've had a hard time reaching the most relevant scale. So uh, I'm a chemist by training. One of the things I like to say and think about is if I draw a molecule on the chalkboard or whiteboard or smart board, um, you know, what is the likelihood that a uh, synthetic biology lab, either in academia or in one of the, the many companies that, that work on strain engineering can make a small amount of it? Well, we've seen through, through programs like DARPA Living Foundries and DARPA Thousand Molecules um, that we can make almost anything in a very small quantity. Not everything is equally easy. I'm oversimplifying to some degree, but it really is quite remarkable how um, robust uh, making a small amount of material is these days. Now, the conversation and the tone really changes when I say, well, can you make a kilogram or five kilograms or a ton scale? And that's really where Biomaid comes into the co comes into the picture, right? How do we start to think about creating a wide array of products, whether those are existing products or even better uh, performance advantage products made with biology at the scale that's needed to, to commercialize them. And Biomade's approach to doing this is through this idea of manipulate, accumulate, de-risk, uh, and execute, which try to propel uh, products sort of from this early design, build, test, learn phase through to um, commercializable uh, advantage. Now, I want to make a quick sort of side comment about how we th have to think about this so that we are really moving from uh, a technology-based approach to businesses that could be successful. Uh, and so this slide uh, is meant to, to sort of represent both the technology risk uh, and the business risk envelopes and noting that they are different. So Biomade, uh, while it is a uh, manufacturing innovation institute and is an R&D and workforce development program, we think to be successful, we need to both consider technology risk and business risk and how they work together, uh, because to succeed in driving products to market, we need to be aware that there's a gap and think about how to best uh, address solutions in that gap and to the extent possible, de-risk uh, opportunities that can um, uh, make, for su make for successful products. And so in, in doing that, there's, there's a lot of potential options, right? Biomade, we think, has actually an opportun opportunity to adjust both the technology risk envelope and the business risk envelope um, because they are not completely uh, distinct from, from one another. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on that today, um, but it's one of the approaches that we've been been taking and thinking about in the standup, you know, particularly as we uh, work on how we're going to engage uh, the broader membership uh, when joining it, of course, including Georgia Tech. So I want to take a moment to to sort of foot stomp the idea that Biomade is an innovation institute, and so driving disruptive innovation is one of our core objectives. Um, so on one hand, we look at the, the second slide or the first slide, substantive slide I presented that shows $275 million of investment over seven years. We can do a lot with that. We plan to do a lot with that, but it is not an infinite amount of resource given the number of potential opportunities that, that are there. And so we wanna make sure that we are defining problems that will accelerate commercialization and then discovering disruptive tools and processes to accelerate uh, to accelerate that, so that we can um, so that we can develop technologies that are going to be uh, translated and allow for the translation to commercial products most most quickly. Now, I used an example that's focused on technology development, 
But driving disruptive innovation is really a fundamental tenant of Biomade. Uh, and what do I mean by that? We should be thinking innovatively about how to consider business risk. We should be thinking innovatively about how to develop uh, work for, uh, the workforce of, of the future. We should be thinking innovatively about how to develop uh, and understand uh, legal, societal, ethical implications of the development of biotechnologies. So this is uh, a slide I like to spend a couple of minutes on because it really underpins uh, how we approach uh, development for, uh, for Biomade going forward. Now I'm going to spend a couple, uh, just a couple minutes talking about how we view this idea of manipulate, accumulate, de-risk, and, and execute. Um, and this is an overly busy slide that has um, really tries to show the interconnectedness uh, of of these of these areas. So what, one aspect of Biomade, and actually a project that we've uh, already started um, as one of the quick start projects from uh, from the Institute is around developing a digital backbone for uh, industrial biomanufacturing. And so this is a, a technology backbone um, that allows us to really con collect and connect uh, data across Biomade R&D efforts. Uh, and, and we hope that by collecting uh, and analyzing uh, data broadly, we have an opportunity uh, to uh, understand new things, perform stronger data analytics with larger data sets than may otherwise uh, be available, because predictive scale-up, uh, which I'll talk about in just a second, uh, is one of the goals of uh, biomanufacturing. Um, how do we change the tenor of that conversation when I say we should make a kilogram as cheaply as possible? Um, better predictive technologies will, will get us there. Manipulate also includes strain engineering. And, and I'll just take a moment to say strain engineering here. You know, it's how do we really start to think about strain engineering in, in a somewhat new way? Think about it towards the, um, you know, how is this going to work in a 100,000 liter fermentation system? Or how is this going to look when we need five tons of product? Um, a lot of that is uh, is done is done today, but how can we make that more robust and more more predictable? Uh, Accumulate is focused on making testable amount of bioproducts. One of the issues in industrial biotech is that it's too hard and too costly to make that first kilogram. Um, we need to be able to fail more quickly, and potential customers need to see. Uh, enough product to be able to test it in their system to feel comfortable. Um, if we have to know for sure that it's going to work before we, by, because the investment is too high uh, to fail, um, then we're not going to see industrial biomanufacturing take hold the way we hope it might. And so Accumulate is about how can we get to the point where we can make testable amounts of bioproducts more quickly, more predictably, um, uh, at the right scale. Uh, De-risk is about both purifying and expanding uh, to really sort of this pre-manufacturing scale. And this is manufacturing at, uh, at an industrial scale for the products uh, and the commercial scale, I should say, the products that, that, we, uh, that we need. Uh, execute really ties this, this all together. So that includes everything from what are the supply chain issues that we're going to have to consider? What are the ethical, legal, social, societal, security, workforce considerations that have to be built into this? What does the workforce of the future really look like? Uh, and how do we uh, make sure that we uh, both understand what those jobs are going to be and what they're going to look like, uh, and have opportunities across the spectrum to both train and and retrain uh, people to fill those to fill those uh, jobs um, before we have uh, a over demand problem, uh, which some will argue we have today. Um, and at the same time, understanding that the changing nature of the economy, especially the changing nature of manufacturing jobs really gives us an opportunity to 
uh, think about workforce development uh, across the across the board. Uh, so I just want to take a moment and and talk a little bit more about a, a, a comment I made uh, previously, and that is around how we think about manipulation and and strain engineering for uh, industrial industrial products. We really want to make a uh, large scale MRL8 as predictable as possible. And that includes everything from collecting the data to be able to do that, uh, doing the data analytics that's needed, um, but also the, the strain engineering work, um, both on uh, really industrially relevant strains, but also um, to better understand uh, the underlying biology that's going to be needed uh, in order to get quickly uh, to this uh, MRL8 or to really large scale uh, fermentation systems. So to get there, we started to think about what a biomade roadmap might look like. And so uh, mind you, this is very early, early days and us trying to think about really what is the overall framework that uh, we can put in place so that at launch, when we have Georgia Tech and all of the other members join uh, Biomade, then um, we really have a framework in place so that we can start attacking and identifying uh, particular opportunities in each of these in each of these areas. Um, so I'm just going to cut across these rows very uh, quickly um, to give you a little bit of an idea of how we're trying to think about. Uh, industrial bio, industrial biotech. So starting with the middle, um, we want to think about industrial uh, representative production scenarios. You know, not all production uh, opportunities are made equal, and not all scenarios are the same. And so, thinking both about the opportunities across different scales and across different volumes can allow us uh, to segment. Uh, a roadmap or a technology plan in a way that really understands which um, uh, what the big problems and then potentially big opportunities are. So this is everything from a dedicated production plant to a single product and to be large volume, large scale, all the way to the right where you have this idea of a redeployable production plant on wheels. So you imagine a trailer, a shipping container um, that can uh, make really a large array of, of products. Uh, this is probably a good time to, to mention that Biomade has uh, really many purposes. You know, one is to develop R&D solutions to large scale industry problems. Um, but the other, uh, particularly as a Department of Defense-led institute, is to think about how can we develop capabilities that work for the Department of Defense and have applications uh, across uh, the, the economic sector. And so things like uh, deployable production plants uh, make a lot of sense in a defense context, uh, but they also make a lot of sense in a, in a commercial context. We've seen during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic how strained supply chains have been, uh, including uh, supply chains around chemical and industrial products. That strain has the potential to be mitigated by, um, by bio-industrial uh, manufacturing. If we can imagine a world where we have bioindustrial manufacturing plants at, at relevant scales spread across the United States, then uh, that are that are have the ability to make products reasonably on demand, or at least reasonable classes of products uh, that are required for uh, national homeland health or economic security, then we can solidify both our supply chains. Uh, as well as have uh, a more sustainable future, given uh, the amount that we spend on transporting fuels, uh, transporting chemical products uh, across across the country. Um, we actually just saw an example of this 
play out, although it, it was muted a little bit because of the pandemic, and that was um, the, the freezing cold temperatures in, uh, in Texas uh, really slowed down chemical production in um, Gulf Coast refineries. That slowdown, uh, because of the, the a regional weather event, uh, really has uh, implications across the chemical and material supply chains uh, in, in the U.S. And so you can, if you track these, you can actually see dip ebbs and flows of certain products that are more closely aligned to, uh, to those plants. So not only do, can we think about this in the context of, of a pandemic, we can think about opportunities for industrial biomanufacturing in the context of climate change and, and uh, the increase in a number of severe weather events that can have uh, broader implications on uh, capital infrastructure and major infrastructure investments. And we can go deeper and deeper in, into this. At the top of the slide really identifies uh, what uh, we were uh, talking about on business risk. So how do we think about uh, what the business pressures are? What are those manufacturing criteria that we should build in uh, in thinking about the potential scenarios that we have and the potential uh, opportunities that, that we have in place. Uh, and then along the bottom, you'll see basically a repeat of, of a previous slide around the technology uh, modules or modalities that Biomade sees as opportunities for us to, uh, to move forward. Uh, so I want to talk just for a minute. I know Georgia Tech is uh, extremely well versed in how manufacturing innovation its work, um, although I have come to learn that those in uh, bioengineering and biotechnology have uh, often had less direct engagement outside of the biomedical space at, say, Nimble or Biofab USA. Um, so I'm going to spend just a few minutes talking about how we see Biomade coming together. The timing of this is quite good because we're uh, very close to uh, our, our formal launch, uh, at which point we will kick this into high gear. Um, I don't have slides uh, on that uh, in my approved set yet, um, but at the end of the talk, I'll give a little bit of a preview of, of what's to come. So Biomade is a membership-driven institute. Uh, which means that we need to first identify institute priorities. Those priorities primarily come from in industry and government. We're trying to, to build a manufacturing industry. We need to know what those priorities are. Once we've identified those priorities, we can uh, build a technology roadmap. And so I talked a little bit about the framing uh, for that in a previous slide. Uh, that's really industry, academia, nonprofit research institutes, and governments and government representatives all coming together to say what are opportunities over the next few years uh, that we can, can tackle. We'll then develop project calls uh, around those, uh, around that roadmap to make investments in particular technology areas. Um, we'll put out project calls and, and focus on member, member teaming and team selection. I want to make a quick comment just about a philosophical approach that we're taking to uh, R&D at Biomade in, uh, in the initial phase. And that is, you know, we really see an opportunity for companies uh, and universities to work together on collaborative projects uh, to build capabilities that would not be easily built uh, otherwise. There are a lot of reasons for that, not just uh, the the um, not just the innovation ecosystem that that exists, but things like infrastructure needs uh, cut across multiple areas that can be hard to do outside of a collaborative environment. And we want at Biomade to really enable that collaborative uh, collaborative environment. Um, once teams are identified and projects are funded. We'll then uh, run, project, uh, run projects with an active program management approach uh, with a focus on development of capabilities and, and IP. Um, 
we're now going to get into the to the wordy slides. So as as I said before, I'm not going to um, read this all to you. I'm not even going to cover everything on each of the slides. But there, uh, uh, this recording I think will be made available to you, um, and we can make the slides available to you uh, as well if you're if you're interested. Um, so I outlined a little bit about our approach to innovation. One thing I didn't say, but is is important, is that we want to make sure that uh, to the extent possible, training and education components are built into uh, technical projects. Um, and uh, all R&D projects will uh, incorporate uh, some level of uh, bioethics, biosecurity, um, and or policy or societal engagement um, so that we are building an integrated ecosystem and not, uh, as a close colleague likes to say, stovepipes of excellence. Uh, I also want to take a minute to talk about the way we view sort of project risk reward. Um, you know, I spent some time talking about developing a roadmap, identifying uh, opportunities uh, around that roadmap, and then focusing on iterative advancement. So we want to do that. We think that that's very important for the development of this uh, of this ecosystem. Um, there are some good things that come from following a roadmap. That said, um, we don't want to uh, be so closely tied to iterative advances that we miss out on opportunities for potentially high risk but very high reward uh, work that would result in, in really a step change of capabilities. And so uh, at, from the outset with Biomaid, um, we plan to allocate uh, funding resources, you know, roughly 80% to iterative advances uh, and prod based on, on the roadmap, but reserve roughly a fifth of the funding to say, um, okay, well, there's an idea that's relatively uh, high risk, but is going to take us, you know, eight years into the future in one year. Um, and if we can make some investments to try to get to step change in capabilities, we view that as one of Biomade's roles. Um, and uh, some of that, at least, has a real opportunity in uh, in the academic environment, uh, which is one of the reasons I, I highlight it for uh, for this group here. I mentioned at the beginning, Biomade, of course, is a manufacturing innovation institute, and so there are opportunities to inv inject innovation throughout uh, the, the project uh, system. Uh, I want to spend most of the time on this slide in the upper right-hand corner talking about, about types of projects. Uh, this is in part to get uh, those of you that are uh, you know, thinking about working with Biomade um, once launched to, to consider the opportunities that are there. So I've spent time talking about our roadmap, et cetera, uh, and these are institute projects that are uh, co-funded between industry, academia, and government with uh, that $87.5 million um, as a basis from the, from the federal government. We have a lot of uh, control. The institute, uh, through its membership, has a lot of control over uh, the priorities there and how we uh, fund and execute that that work under the framework that I've spent time talking about. Uh, the other thing that Biomade is going to spend real time doing, and in fact we've already uh, started quite in-depth discussions with government about um, some possible pro product projects, uh, are directed research projects. So these are really outside the funding that we've uh, already secured but really leveraging the Institute and its membership to directly work on, pro on projects of interest to federal agencies. So if, say, AFOSR, the Air Force Office of Scientific Research, has a project that they're interested that industrial biomanufacturing could bring solutions to, there's the ability for us, for AFOSR, to come to Biomade and say, Biomade, with your membership, can you address this problem? Um, and we think, and, and that is with, uh, you know, one, resources that are in addition to and outside of uh, the resources that are already available and under somewhat different parameters than we currently um, have for institute projects themselves. But we think one of the most important things that we can do 
is be well tuned to facilitate bioindustrial manufacturing solutions across a wide array of government problems. Because if we can do that, and we can really prove that industrial biomanufacturing can provide, provide those solutions, Biomate is doing its job by enabling and growing uh, a, this domestic manufacturing ecosystem, you know, both by running these projects directly, but also by demonstrating that they can deliver products or capabilities. Uh, I want to take a moment to talk about uh, infrastructure, uh, because it has come up a number of times related to, to both biomade and bioindustrial manufacturing in, in general. Um, and actually, Georgia Tech played a, 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 an important role in this uh, uh, in the state of Georgia in thinking about what infrastructure availability might there be um, in order to, to uh, build a bioindustrial ecosystem. So one problem that we've heard from companies consistently is that pilot or intermediate scale infrastructure for fermentation and downstream processing is really lacking in the U.S. Um, we can find modest scale lab, lab or small pilot scale infrastructure uh, and production scale infrastructure, both reasonably available. But, um, you know, really post 100 liter fermentation, is, it can be hard to find, can be hard to access. Um, especially for a wide array of R&D activities. And so Biomate has spent some time focusing on, you know, one, can we simply identify where some of this infrastructure is? So the University of Georgia, for example, has some of this infrastructure. Um, uh, a number of other universities across the country have this infrastructure. Some companies have this infrastructure, although it's not always available to the ecosystem, although through Biomate it could be made available. But then how do we also encourage the development of this infrastructure? So you actually saw at the beginning of this, de-risk relevant infrastructure is one of Biomade's objectives. You know, how do, how do we get some investment in this, in this space around the pilot and intermediate scale uh, uh, facilities? And so one of the, the ideas that Biomade has that it's already starting to, to, talk, to talk about is, you know, what would it take to get something like this, right? How can we get to the point where we have really sufficient infrastructure so that you develop technologies um, and then you can immediately go to test them and you don't have to wait a year or you don't have to prove it out to the point where um, you've made such a large investment that you can't get to, um, that, that you can't afford to, to fail, uh, to fail anymore. And so how can we encourage both state and local governments as well as the federal government, um, to make de further de-risking investments around infrastructure so that we have the capabilities that we need, uh, in the industrial biomanufacturing space to do the work that's, uh, that's relevant. Uh, I'm going to take just a moment to talk about uh, innovating in education and workforce development in LC. I've talked about both of these topics uh, previously, but I'm going to going to touch on them uh, one more time because they are a critical part of Biomade's um, of Biomade's uh, operation. Um, our core focus on education and workforce development uh, starts with understanding. It, from industry, what is really needed, what is needed today, what is needed tomorrow, and what is going to be needed in five or 10 years to the best we can so that we can design programs that will, uh, in the right time frame, have the right people uh, with the right training available uh, for good biomanufacturing jobs uh, that will both help build the industry, help uh, and help the people uh, that can fill those can fill those roles, especially uh, again with the changing manufacturing economy that we're we're seeing. Uh, the ethical, legal, social, societal, security implications uh, of advances in biotechnology are also a critical component of what Biomade is doing and how we're going to focus on the development of this uh, of this ecosystem. Anytime you're doing anything with biology, you have to think about this. Arguably, anytime you're doing anything with technology development, you should be thinking about this. 
And so part of what Biomate is doing uh, now is uh, one, having both biosecurity and bioethics advisors as uh, full voting members of committees, including the technical committee, making an integral system that uh, has these considerations all built in and inculcated throughout uh, the operations of Biomade, but then also identifying opportunities for uh, engagement with the broader uh, with the broader community to understand, you know, where could potentially Biomade make um, some modest investments in this space to understand uh, what is what is needed. Uh, in large part to ensure that the public license to operate is um, uh, is is maintained. How can Biomade serve as a resource to the federal government, to the federal regulatory agencies, so that they understand what products are coming, what are they going to look like, uh, so that so that regulators and policymakers can uh, have the information they need to make uh, to to make good uh, to make good fact based uh, decisions. And so all of this comes together to form uh, to form uh, Biomade. Uh, and so with that, I'm going to to wrap up and say that uh, I am fortunate in that I get to give this presentation. But really, this concept and these uh, opportunities came together through a large team uh, of of individuals uh, and and universities and companies that came together to put this forward. Georgia Tech played uh, a very important role at the at the proposal stage, feeding in information so that we could develop a model that we think is going to work for uh, industrial biomanufacturing. Um, and we're very much looking forward to uh, to our formal our formal launch. We are probably four to six weeks away from that from that formal launch. I can't give you a date today because we're still working with the DoD on uh, exactly the timing and what that's going to look and, and what that's going to look like. Um, but as soon as we have uh, the launch, it's going to go from uh, a lot of quiet behind the scenes work that we've been focused on now to um, full tilt. Uh, we're now running. Uh, and working quickly. So the launch is going to include, uh, you know, both sort of traditional launch type events, um, but also getting the committees established and meeting, including the voting committees that uh, really run Biomade um, and include representatives from uh, the companies and universities shown on this slide. It will also include our first project call where we'll be uh, making available a, a significant uh, amount of funding for uh, R&D priorities under the framework that uh, that I've described. And so with that, uh, I will um, end the formal part of my presentation and I look forward to taking your questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Friedman. That was a fantastic presentation. Um, I'll just comment that I appreciate how you tied you know, the four key functions of propelling you know, new innovations to market to the manufacturing readiness levels. And that's something that uh, Georgia Tech and GTMI is, is really focused on. And, and we're working to integrate MRL awareness uh, and sensitivity through throughout our, our training and, and um, certainly incorporating that in all of our projects. So thank you. It looks like we have a couple of questions that have been submitted so far. Um, the first question is related to redeployable production plants. The question is, does it imply that the suppliers of raw materials and reagents have to change their current supply chain mode to support those re redeployable production plants? So the biggest, unfortunately, the answer is it depends. Um, there's a, it, it's a future that's that's probably a, a a ways away. Ultimately, yes, but you can imagine if you start to think of, um, you can imagine if you start to think about um, how some of these redeploy, how a redeployable production plant um, could leverage more local resources. So this isn't exactly the question, but one of the things that that I like to think about is, uh, for example, you know, how does the U.S. Uh, feedstock infrastructure differ across the country? 
And so in the Midwest, we have corn, corn stover, et cetera. In Michigan, we have sugar beets. In Virginia, we have switchgrass. Um, in California, we have a whole lot of almond hulls uh, in the Central Valley of California. So how can you now start to imagine if we think about feedstocks, uh, raw feedstocks, you know, how can we um, build out uh, deployable plants that potentially can use uh, or at least incorporate some element of raw feedstocks based on wherever they wherever they happen, uh, wherever they happen to be. And so it's actually something, so the Department of Energy has spent a lot of time thinking about feedstock development. And so for Biomade, you know, as much as we were started by the Department of Defense, we really are not limiting ourselves to thinking about, you know, how they approach biomanufacturing or even how sort of the traditional industry approaches it, but saying, well, we've seen this, say, feedstock investment. How do we think about what that, um, how do we think about how that fits into a more uh, distributed approach? And I think that's probably the first step towards uh, a a more broadly deployable uh, approach. Thank you. And uh, the second question is is related or somewhat of a follow up to to the first question. Um, has Biomade discussed the feasibility of redeployable deployable plants with major suppliers in the industry? Uh, only a little bit. Um, so you saw the the slide that at the end there. Um, we've talked about it more, frankly, more with the manufacturer, more with the manufacturers um, and their understanding of supply chains than we have with the suppliers themselves. Um, but it, it's a very good point. To get there, you're going to have to to build that in, um, and it's certainly something we're looking forward to doing once we get through. Uh, launch and are are at full scale um, operation. It looks like an additional question has come in. Um, so thank you for your presentation. Could you please expand a little more about Biomade's roles, actions, tasks? Uh, what the roles, actions, and tasks will be in the post-launch phase? Is Biomade's primary goal to act as a liaison between a large set of groups, or will Biomade focus more on R and D? Um, so a, at the end of the day, Biomade uh, is a is is largely a little funding agency, um, and so uh, it's a but it's a little funding agency that is driven by its members, where the members make the top level decisions, and then we sort of facilitate the will of the of the members, and so. Uh, Biomade's roles, actions, and tasks in the post-launch phase. So really Biomade itself uh, in the post-launch phase is about facilitating uh, these initial 100 members working together. Um, but really based on the input we've had, it's going to be closer to 200 or maybe even 300 companies and universities that are all uh, part of this broader network. And so um, our core job is uh, facilitating that network, um, working with the members uh, through the committee structure uh, to identify priorities and then make um, and then make funding decisions uh, based on uh, the priorities that are are set forth. Um, and then the other aspect that that is important is is that Biomage serves as really the um, liaison or nexus to the federal government. So as a Manufacturing USA Institute, we have uh, this very close and direct connection through a cooperative agreement with the federal government. And so identifying priorities, um, uh, really R&D priorities, but, but uh, also broader sort of economic priorities with, uh, uh, with the government is also part of that, uh, is part of that role. Um, so it's a little bit of acting as a liaison, a little bit as facilitating R&D, a little bit as identifying uh, identifying opportunities. Um, and that's probably the best answer I can give right now. Well, thank you, Dr. Friedman. And thank you to our audience members who joined us today. 
Um, it was a wonderful presentation and uh, very good questions. I'd also encourage our audience members to tune in next Monday, March 22nd, for our next lecture, which will um, focus on digitalization for additive manufacturing, how to leverage digitalization and additive manufacturing operations. Our speaker will be uh, Tim Bell, who is the Additive Manufacturing Business Manager, head of the Center of Competency for Additive Manufacturing with Siemens Digital Industries. Um, in addition, if you or any colleagues were unable to attend today's presentation in full or want to review it uh, at a later time, you can visit the Georgia Tech Manufacturing Institute website. and We will have a recording of today's lecture posted the next day or two. Um, and just as we're wrapping up, I see one other question here. Uh, Dr. Friedman, do you have another minute to or two to address a question? Sure. Okay. Um, it looks like we still have a few minutes until we reach the, the top of the hour, so we'll go ahead. Uh, this question says, uh, Doug, you have stressed the importance of LC being incorporated into all Biomaids activities at center levels and also project levels. Will there be resources allocated to make this commitment to LC a reality? Uh, yes, there will be. So Biomade's so Biomade has um, funding. We'll have funding available for R and D for education and workforce development programs uh, and for LC uh, programs, um, as well as uh, incentives in place to encourage uh, more integrative programs that cut across those three areas. Terrific. Okay. Thank you. And uh, just one final comment from an audience member that's come in. Uh, it says, sounds like Biomade's existence is overdue. Good luck and keep up the good work. And thanks again. <laughs> so I don't see any Hi. other new questions at this time. Again, thank you, Dr. Friedman. Thank you to our audience members. And we look forward to you joining us next Monday at noon. Thanks Have so much. Thank you.